everyone welcome back to the fabrication shop in this episode we're going to be taking a look at functions in the Arduino IDE we're going to look at what they are how they're used and how we create them now we use a number of functions in the code we use for our electronic payload on the Olympus project so we wanted to make sure that you have a basic understanding of what these functions are before we get into the specifics of the ones we use in the Olympus project. So you may be asking why do we use functions at all within our code? Well one of the things is it allows you to create modular pieces of code. You see when you write a function, in that function you create a specific task that is performed and once that task is complete it returns back. This allows you to create building blocks. So if you're familiar with subroutines in the basic programming language, functions in Arduino act very similar. Okay, you can write the function, have it be executed, return back. And this offers you a number of advantages. First off, it helps you organize your code. As you begin to think about your code and everything that it needs to do, uh, it can become quite complex. This allows you to break that complex code down into smaller, simpler steps, execute it one at a time, and that helps make it easier to write your code, to debug your code as you're writing it, things along that line. Along the same lines, it helps increase the readability of your code. And that's real important, especially as you come back to your code uh, a week from now, two weeks from now, six months from now, having the ability to go back and read the code and understand what you wrote, that's really important. Another thing it does is it makes debugging easier. Because you're only writing the code once, it reduces chances for errors when you have to modify it. If you have to write the same thing multiple times, and then you have to go back and change it, did you change it in each instance? Okay, here you only have to worry about changing it once. And that also makes your code much easier to maintain over time. It also helps reduce the overall size of your code. And this is because, again, we're avoiding repetition of the same code over and over again throughout the program. In the Olympus, we use functions for changing colors of our LED light and whether it flashes or is a constant light and if we wrote the same code over and over again each time that happened it would make the program significantly larger here instead of doing that we use a function we call that function it executes returns back keeps the code much much smaller because we do reduce the repetition throughout our code and along the same lines as we reduce the size of the code and we reduce the amount of repetition in the code that also helps reduce memory usage and when you're talking about a small microcontroller like the Arduino memory usage can become a big thing and in fact we did have it with the Olympus project anything we can do to reduce memory usage is a plus especially on a small board like the Arduino one of the last advantages of using functions is you can reuse these in other programs. One of the things that made coding the Olympus project go so much faster and easier is that we were able to reuse a lot of the code from both Project Icarus and the APAM project. Code reuse is a really big thing. You, you want to be able to make your life easier and the more you can reuse your code in other programs and other projects, you're going to be much farther ahead of the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at what a function is. The first thing we want to do is we want to look at the parts of a function. And there's basically four parts. The first part we're going to look at is the return type. Now, in this case, we're looking at a function which flashes an LED lamp in the Olympus project, and it doesn't return anything. So the return type in this case is void. If you wanted to return an integer or something like that, you would have that listed here. 
but in this case, it's void. The next thing is the name of the function. It should be specific to the function. It has to be unique. And this is the same name we're going to use in the code when we call this function from other areas of the program. The last thing is it must be followed by a parentheses. Now in that parentheses, you can have parameters. In this case, again, all we're doing is flashing a light, so there's no parameters, so we list it as void. But you can have multiple parameters in here if you need them, depending on what type of code you're writing and what you need the function to do. The last thing is the body of the function. And this is where we write the bulk of the code that implements what we want the function to do. Like all our other code, it's placed with inside curly braces. You have to have both open and closing curly braces. And unless the return type is void, which in this case it is, you must have a return command at the end of the function. So again, here all we're doing is flashing a lamp. We don't have any type of return type. It's void. So therefore we don't need the return command at the end of the, the function code. So the next thing we're going to look at is how we go about creating a function. And in this case, we're going to take a closer look at our flashing lamp function. This is the one that we use in the Olympus project. And what we wanted here was we wanted a function that will flash the lamp whenever an error is encountered. So as we start to create the function, we're going to enter a return type, a name and a parameter, if there are any. In this case, we don't have a return type, so it's listed as void. We don't have any parameters, so it's listed as void. And we've called the name LED flashing lamp because that gives us a good idea of what this function is doing. Then we go about creating the code that's going to actually flash the lamp. In this case, it's indicating an error in our BMP 180, so we just keep it flashing. Now that we've written the function, the next thing we need to do is call that function from elsewhere in the software. Whenever we want to call a function, we simply need to pass on the parameters of the function and the name of the function. In this case, uh, we're going to look at the function calls for the BMP180. We're actually going to see that there are two functions that we're calling. The first one calls for the function LED blue. This is going to change the color of our lamp to a blue color. And then the one that we've been talking about, it's going to call for the function LED flashing lamp and that's going to cause the LED lamp to start flashing on and off. When you create your functions, you can create them anywhere. You can create them on that initial tab or you can create new tabs and that's what I like to do. I like to create new tabs. There's a number of reasons for this. One, we can then group our functions into tabs based on what they're doing. Most of the time the tab is going to have a single function on it but we may have a tab that has multiple functions. All of this is done just simply to allow us to organize our code better. Now, the other thing when you look at your tabs is that each tab becomes its own INO file. So you can see here on the right, we've got a screenshot of the tabs and the INO files that make up the Olympus project. The one that's highlighted in blue is the same one that's the name of the folder. So that'll be the very first tab. And then the rest of the tabs are going to be loaded up in alphabetical order. The other thing is, even though we have tabs as multiple files, if you have global variables, they're available to all the code in all the tabs. So the next thing we need to look at is how do we go about actually creating these new tabs. So how you create the tab is going to depend on what version of the Arduino software you're using. If you're using version 1.8, what you need to do is go and look at the top row where the tabs are located at. And what you're going to see is all the way over in the far right, a small little triangular arrow pointing down. And you want to select that down arrow. 
When you do that, you're going to get a pop-up menu and you want to select new tab from that pop-up menu. What you're going to see is near the bottom of the screen, there's a yellow bar and down there it's going to say name for the new file. This is going to be the name of your tab. You want to go ahead and enter that, click on the OK button, then a new tab will be opened, it'll be blank, and you can begin to write your new function. If you're using Arduino 2.0 or greater, it's similar but a little bit different. You're going to look up towards the uh, top of the screen where the tabs are located at. This time, instead of a down arrow, you're going to see what looks like a little button with three dots on it. You want to click on that button. When you click on that button, you're going to get a pop-up menu again, select new tab. This time, instead of a bar being down at the bottom, what's going to happen is you're going to get a dialog box to pop up. And in this dialog box is where you want to enter the new file name, which will also be the name of your tab. Once you enter the name in, click OK. The new tab will be opened, it will be blank, and you can begin to write your function. So this concludes our introductory look at functions, what they're used for, how they work. In our next episode, we'll start looking more at the specific functions that we used in the Olympus project and what the purpose of those functions are. So until next time, wishing you all the best and take care.